This is uh, probably one of the most different videos that we've uh, ever taken the time to film because I think that uh, in the journey of knowledge people are in somewhat of a quandary or confusion because they're, they're mixing things up. I never know where someone's at in knowledge because I have no idea uh, until maybe I speak to them for a few moments even what level uh, of comprehension they may have, whether it's of the Bible, language, but uh, the simplest way to explain uh, what is going on would be get us to the understanding of confusion. And confusion is really like a merger of putting two things together that do not belong. But then we try to make them work somehow and therefore we've got chaos and control. And the good does not need control, it's the chaos that needs control. And so in our world, there is a couple things on the on the movement, uh, mainly what is uh, uh, trying to be controlled is greed, which happens through contracting, which we know the word greed is in the word agreed. And therefore, uh, the journey we have in life is quite simple because our life seems to be going down an idea, at least if you're listening to the world that's around you, this idea of profit. And to profit, is not a very harmonious, good, balanced arrangement because in order to profit, you have to do usury. And to do usury, you must use your fellow man. And uh, wealth is generally the objective for a lot of people. And the concern that uh, we have is where are we in this journey? Are we aiming for this? And I have many people saying, yes, they're aiming for that profit, but then they don't want to pay tax. And so they go down a world of for-profit thinking, claiming that they don't want anybody to, of course, glean any tax from them. And that's really the journey of sin. And in order to go down this path, you require a sin number for that. If you wish to use what belongs to government or God and not pay for it, that's a sin. And therefore, wealth is tracked through this number. Because you are, for hire, which is really legalized prostitution. Then just take the extra R off for higher at the end. Oh, yes, for higher. Sorry, sorry, you're for higher. So, in order to go down this journey, if you're selling yourself for money, you require this. A godlike charitable mind would not be involved in that. And therefore, would be relying on God to look after their needs through faith, knowing that if they give of themselves, which is God's plan, they would receive. So we know love many times has been used in synonym, word form, charity. Now, charity has a different viewpoint in the world of sin, because charity and sin, which uh, in the world of sin, the best it could be is you'll get a tax receipt for giving something, but that's really a contract. Because you can't give something as a gift and then expect to get something back in return for that, because that would not be truly gratuitous or pure charity. So therefore, there is a strange world in the world of sin that deals with this type of charity. But the true charity is completely gratuitous, expecting nothing back, giving of oneself, not for hire, the complete opposite. So the opposite of this would be not for hire. If you're not for hire, well, then you're into a much different word 
that relates to hire <laughs> in its opposite form in the English language, which is really you're of God, which is a higher power. And there are powers that look after the legal prostitute who wants to sell himself for wages. He's not being good to his fellow man. He expects to be paid to do good or do what he does. But the one who is of God, who works on pure charity, is part of the higher power. And that's, if we, uh, in its best understanding, would be reflected in the book of Romans, chapter 13, which talks about let every soul be subject to the higher powers. And the higher powers of being ordained by God, according to Scripture, have God's power until he says otherwise. Because there must be somebody in control or in charge or it'd be complete anarchy and chaos. Evil will be executed against evil and good will be looked after because there is no concern for good. Because if good is doing good, it's not worried about being attacked by evil. But be concerned if these people who think they could be for this be for hire and then not want to pay the tax on what belongs to the government. And therefore, you can see the word T in tax because that's title, absolute wrong for those that want to be in charge. So we control all those that want to be in charge under sin because that would be a sin to think that they could be in charge when the government's in charge. And the government reflects the position and ordination of God. Therefore, they are God. Because they hold the power that only God could give. No other power could come from any other source other than from the highest source. So if you're there to do good, you're not for hire. So this would be a ridiculous discussion for people who would try to say, oh, I'm not going to pay tax, but I'm going to sell myself for hire. In order to do that, you not only require a sin number, you require a sin name, and you require something that joins two things together that do not belong, good and evil. If you're using evil and are not expecting to pay back evil for your use of the evil, you will basically find out there will be a very serious sword of energy coming against you. And unfortunately, this is where the problem with the free man movements come into. They think that they're going to not pay rent on the name that belongs to the Gentiles who are now in control of the power that has allowed them to exist in charge under a government control. And if people think they can do better than the government... I would beg to differ because it's a mess as it is. And I would not want a bunch of incompetents who thought they knew how to do things. They didn't know how to do things. They think they know how to do things. There's a difference between thinking and knowing. Knowing is opposite to thinking. When you're thinking, you don't know. When you know, you don't think. So, maybe that's why thinking is a thin king. <laughs> so, what we're dealing here is two opposites within a name and so it gets very confusing when we use in the world of profit a direction of a corporation which is a corpse which will run those that are dead in their sin and trespass against the father because they want to be the prodigal son going down the journey and says I'm in charge I'm gonna do what I think I want to do with the estate well that's an illusion because they really don't have the power and in order to do that they start to do the signing under this name. So we'll just use the name John Smith. It could be John Doe. We're only using this as reference. So Smith is the occupation name. That's the tax name. John had no problem until he wanted to actually be taxable. Because he didn't want to give, he wanted to sell. That's the difference between giving fish and sell fish. If you want to sell fish, then you will pay the tax. If you'd like to give fish, you're not taxable. Because this guy's love and this guy's war. Because he wars against God. 
because he has arms. This is an arms. It's not peaceable. And to be peaceable, you must free, be free from the character of war. So it would be impossible for John Smith to say he's free from the character of war. Well, he's got a war name in his name. So he's not one. He's two. You see, if you're at one, at one, well, you've atoned. That's where you have no problem with God. God's with you. Because that's a grace name. It's amazing, because it's a miracle. And the government, under the Registrar General's office, which handles birth, death, and marriage registrations, do not register people, they register events. Now, we could look at it in the fact is that a miracle is an event. And if we go into Webster's 1828, Noah, Noah Webster's 1828, certainly I'm sure you could find equal thought at par in Oxford's. So I'm not here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get it out of this. We could use the paper printout, but I'd rather use, actually, you can see we're actually reading out of a dictionary. So uh, we'll, we'll look up uh, again the, uh, the word miracle. Miracle, if I find it. <laughs> okay. Uh, miracle. To wonder. Notice it's a little different than the word to, the, the word wander. <laughs> if, you, if you're wandering, you may not know where you're going. Okay? A little different than wondering, but miracle is to wonder. Literally, a wonder or wonderful thing. But appropriately in theology, which is belief, of course, in God as the higher power, an event or effect contrary to the established constitution and course of things, or a deviation from the known laws of nature, a supernatural event. Well, your Christian name is a supernatural event because it is a God-given name. And it is contrary to the constitution of man that has framed society. On this constitution, they form two, not one. There's a difference between that. But in law, no man, woman or child, could transfer to a person, corporation, or trust their given name. Because it's God-given. It's a gift and it's bestowed upon them. God holds that in trust, if you trust in God. When one trusts in man, this could collapse, because there's where he makes his mistake, because the opposite side of this is the occupation name, the war name. The one that says, I will whore myself for money. I will not give of myself. I will live based on wages, gambling, insurance, not assurance of God. I'll be storing up treasures on earth. I will think I can put my hope in gold and silver and money, which we know, according to the book of James, says will eventually be rotted away at. It will not survive, because there's no thing that man can put his trust in other than God, if he's spiritual. But if he wishes to be carnal, he will go down the carnal journey, and he will try to behead, and then they will take your picture and behead you. And now you will be wanted, not needed. The concern here is to blame society for our own error of not seeing. And in the civil society and the criminal law, ignorance is no excuse. In God's law, ignorance is an excuse. But in man's world, if you are using that, you are automatically guilty because you're at war. You are at war with the state. You are bearing arms. And you are not able to bear arms under the Constitution against the government. So our world works on what is considered to be a mixed war. Okay? And we are going to explain mixed war. Now I'm going to read mixed war. If someone could hand me the law dictionary. 
And I'm not here promoting law dictionaries. I'm just Black's Law, please. There's a lot of codes going on, like Blackstone. You ever wonder why they call the guy who does all the writing on, on law called Blackstone? Because he's working for those that are under the idea there is no acquittance. There is plausible deniability that Christ did not redeem you. So they deem you instead of redeem you. Because only Christ could redeem you. So while you work in the law of man, you will be deemed to be a sinner. You are guilty until proven innocent. And that is how it works, despite what any lawyer may tell you. Now, the word... The, the words we're using here come under mixed war because most people don't understand how society operates. And that's why they're mixed up. And you cannot serve God and mammon according to scripture. And mammon being money. Mixed war I have to go to war. <laughs> Did you get that? You have to go to war. I have to I go don't to think war so. to see war. Peace, peacefully go to the word war. So I'm peacefully traveling through the dictionary <laughs> on my journey to get to war. Uh, mixed war. A mixed war is one which is made up on one side by public authority and on the other side by mere private persons. Now, let's understand how that could be. Who would be the private persons and who would be the public authority? Well, the public authority... Just under the book here. Right Can you use a black one that shows it better? The public authority is on one side. Now, you have to understand the word author. God is the authority of all things, so God would have it in government. So government is the public authority. And don't you ever try to believe otherwise, because if you do, you're going to find out the hard way, as a few free men are about to find out. Now, that's one side. Then there's the other side, which is a, these are the suicidal private free men. <laughs> now, these privates, uh, we know, think that they can hide. And you see, you know what something about private is, it's an interesting... Uh, uh, code in the English language because each letter has a meaning even though you may not have been told that but you see when you take God out of the public L is stands for God in the English letters of the alphabet so when you take that out you get pubic which is private and that's when you go undercover with a figment of your imagination that God doesn't know what your publics look like even though you think they're private now so they give the insane people who go to departmentals and you know what happens, the government has all these departmentals to look after people that have removed themselves from mental thought. Now they're a bunch of mentals. Okay. Going to departmentals, and then the departmentals look after these mentals, and of course, at that point, we're so nice in our society, we even fundamental. Please put and wouldn't you need to fund a bunch of mentals who actually believe that they can actually take God out of the public? So I'd rather leave God back in the public then I know who's in charge, and then I know who my father is. And he's not a thin king. He's a fat hurt. Because he has both male and female in him. Because he made man in his image, both male and female. And when you understand this, you may be born again. Because you're still in the womb. You haven't been born yet. Because you didn't see your graced name, your love name, which comes from free. That'll be the good spell, the gospel. But there's a bad spell in your name right now because someone's spelling against you, and that's Satan. So there's a good spell and a bad spell. If you want to be part of the gospel, the good spell, you better understand who's in charge. And if you know who's in charge and you're not in charge anymore, and you realize that God is in charge, which is the government, well, then you better start acting as if they're a father and start asking them under your grace name because you will have grace, which is love. And then you will be in God's will, which is free will. He gave you a free will. You didn't have to go to a lawyer. You didn't have to pay for it. You had to come forward under it as an heir. 
not an error. You see, people get mixed up between these words. They want to be heirs, but they want to work in error. And then they call themselves freemen. But then they don't understand that the surname is a mark of Cain. And you know a Cain's a lien, right? That's a lienable. I hope I haven't lost you at listen carefully. So now we go down below this, and you'd realize you have an inalienable, we can call it unalienable, I've had discussions on that, but we'll just leave it as inalienable. That means no one can lean it, because it belongs to God. It's God's intellectual property, and Jesus Christ died for it. Then you've got the alienable side. Okay, that's when someone doesn't see who they are, and this is transferable, movable. That's movable. Okay? This one's fixed. Because you remember, Jesus died for our sins, so he fixed the human race. We know who wins. This side, uh-oh, that's a race going on. It's very racy. Lots of competition. Everybody fighting for title. So instead of being a peaceful guy, they want to go into the ring and be a title fighter. And instead of being the peaceful guy to throw down his G-loves, he wants to fight. So you have to decide which side you're on, but you can't be in the middle on this. Because if you're in the middle, you're just a broker and you'll be broke. Because believe me, you don't have anything. And I don't care if you're the wealthiest guy you think of the world right now, you've got the most debt. Because every bit of amount of private money that isn't in the public is complete theft. And they're tracking all the theft. They know where it all is. So, if you want to be the broker, don't worry. The cops will be pulling you over and tell you to spread them. Because you're trying to make a spread. You're going to have to insert a laugh track in here. And you know when you spread, you make sure the hole's open for your colony. Because it's all backed up. we got a big backed up colony going on right now. And it's full of crap. I was going to say something else, but I'll leave that alone just because we have minor ears. That's okay. Now, if this is making no sense to you, don't get incensed. Take some time. Play it back over and over again. I'm trying to be frank with you. I will try to burn some frankincense. Because Frank is free and truthful. If you want to be on the wrong side, it is your choice. Now, you could ring the wrong number, or you could be on the proper number. And your nine-digit number only has nine digits, so that means you can't make a call, because you don't have ten numbers. You need ten numbers to make a call. And you can't call upon the name of the Lord with your nine-digit number, because that one's refusing to listen. That's nine in German. And then you will be the mark. And then the police officer will be behind you going marker number, because they know how much money to make off of you, because you're already marked. And therefore, you're part of the cane, and you will no longer be able. <laughs> and then the cops will make sure that, because you've identified yourself as part of the cane, which is the club, they will club you for not listening. Now, I'm sorry if you're offended by the fact that I'm not a member of your club anymore. And the masses will want to mob me, because they're all part of the crime. And it's a crime they don't know the truth because they wish to be blind, and therefore they can't see. But as Moses said to the Israelites, he told them to have faith, and I'm bringing you to the Red Sea through Scripture here. And when he brought them to the Red Sea, he said, have enough faith, because they thought they were damned to doom. They were going to be doomed to death through those Egyptian pagans that were coming after them. And Moses brought them there, and they still didn't have enough faith. He said, don't worry. When we cross the Red Sea, it'll all make sense when we get to the other side. So hopefully it'll make sense when I help you cross the Red Sea. But you have to use scripture, because I would not have saw any of this if I didn't realize that the code was in here. Not in so much these dictionaries. These dictionaries are little trails down the journey. And more than not, they've disclosed everything that is out there. You just didn't see it. You got caught up in a mixed war, because you wanted to be private. And you didn't want to be subject as a soul, and your soul is a spirit. 
which is your conscience. And when you sin against the Holy Spirit, which comes from God, you now are damned. So if I know this, and I go back in there selling myself for hire, receiving money for my charitable go-ahead to help others, then I would be a whore. And we know that's what's coming. The destruction of the largest whored society is about to come to its end. And it's going to get so bad that eventually it will attack Christ's followers. Because they'll be the only ones not selling themselves for money anymore. They won't be prostitutes. Our choices are in here. You have your options. You can choose life or you can choose death. Be still and know that I am Lord. Therefore, you know that the government is the signing authority because they hold on to the control and the power. And therefore, you must not be in charge. You cannot be the father and be the benefiting son or daughter in the will. If you try to do that, and you try to be the one who takes over the will, well, when you get short with Will, which is like William, then you get the name Bill, and believe me, you will be ill, because you'll be getting that in the mail, which is war, because mail represented war, and you'll be getting it at your post, and therefore you will be an impost, an imposter. I hope I have totally ruined your foundation of stupidity. Because if you do not wake up to what I have put on here, then you haven't read this book, which is about love and charity, not about making money. And if you're out there making money, then you're a counterfeiter. Because I can't make any money. I'm not allowed. Love or money? Prostitute? Or not a prostitute? Good? or evil? Christ or pagan? For hire or not for hire? What is it going to be? Do not blame others because you won't make a choice. If you want to stand for what is right, then you're under grace. If you want to stand for what is wrong, you'll take the hit. You can either be armed or unarmed. Peaceful people do not carry arms, so therefore they would not carry a surname. Uniquely enough, even though it appears on the record of the Statement of Birth record, it's not seen. It's off the record. Because you can't transfer a given name to anyone. Because it was bestowed upon you as a gift for grace for you to be peaceful. I hope that you will be able to understand this. And then eventually when you see this and understand it and comprehend it and take it into your heart, which eventually will come out of your mouth, and we know the liver is the seat of motivation according to even not only dictionary definitions, but uh, scripture. So the, heat of the, the seat of motivation, your liver, then you will be delivered. Because you're already delivered at birth. To safety. Unfortunately, most people have been horsing around. And they think that they're going to actually outwit everything that we have here. The people who have come up with any of this understand what's going on. I didn't come up with this that's already there. I couldn't think of something that isn't already there. I did not load my mainframe that was already there from day one. And it's infinite. But unfortunately, people have got clouded behind their own greed because they're too busy out there trying to give some skin. And therefore, they have a Gentile foreskin. Because they've got a film over their eyes and they cannot see, and it's the greed. And you could not be involved in any of this because your Christian name, not involved, is substance. That surname is nothing but form, inform. And that's why our whole world works on informing like Judas. Because you could not run a society of criminals without having informers. And democracy is one of the greatest degraded forms of war against God being treasonous. Not only treasonous against a king or a queen, but treasonous against God as supreme. It's blasphemous. And in fact, a surname is blasphemous against Christianity because it implies the fact that there's a greater surety. They hold the responsibility. You have a constitutional exemption not to be involved. 
not to bear arms. But you cannot be a participant and a non-participant. You cannot be armed and be unarmed. That would be an oxymoron. So we hope this will help you. This is probably the most very quick thrown together overall that we've done so far. But it's going to get much more blunt and to the point as time goes on. But we're trying to get you through realizing where you are and what's happening. And if you can't see it, you're going to, you're going to find yourself in a very doomed position in the future. So we hope the, the, uh, the information is going to lead you to respect in this book because this is God's word and he doesn't lie. And he said that the only remedy was to accept a grace pardon of Jesus Christ. That means accepting your Christian name. But he did not say to become unequally or unevenly yoked with unbelievers. So uh, our concern right now is uh, choosing sides. You're either going to be able or you're going to be Cain. One will be an acceptable walk of life before God or one will not. I hope that you will be able and not came.